do keep your Little John's Gospels on you uh, throughout. Uh, keep checking uh, what's going on uh, as we unpack this a little bit more. I wonder if you've ever, ever considered it. You might not have. You ever wondered what it'd be like to never be hungry? Ever wondered what it'd be like to never want any food ever again? It's funny, is it? We just eat. Do you find we just eat all the time? Here's my question for you. Who normally just has cereal in the morning for breakfast? Put your hand up if you're a cereal person. Uh, okay, next. Put your hand up if you're, you're a toast person. Who has toast? Okay, there might be a few. Put your hand up if you're a cook breakfast person. Ah, oh, some of you. Here's my question. Who this morning had cereal, toast, cooked breakfast, fruit, yogurt, and anything else you can get your hands on? <laughs> uh, not as many as I thought. Funny, isn't it? When we come here, we just lower the plates up. We're like, oh, yes, lower the food. But here's the thing. You'll still do it again tomorrow, won't you? Tomorrow morning, you'll come around, and you'll just go along, and you'll put it all on. Even after lunch, and into this evening, you're still hungry. You're still hungry, and your stomach isn't full. Look what Jesus is saying here. Very true that I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What a claim Jesus is making here. But what's it all about? See, when Jesus made this claim, it would have shocked everyone listening in. This is the first of the big I am sayings, which we're going to unpack each evening. <coughs> but here it clearly, when Jesus said this, he was making a huge, huge claim. And we just want to unpack a little bit this evening and understand why that is. Let me quickly set the scene for you. Just the day previously to when Jesus said this, he performed an outrageous act. Just the day before, Jesus provided bread and fish for 5,000 men plus their wives and children. You're going to look at it this evening and really come to grips with what was going on there. But just the day before, Jesus performed an incredible miracle. In providing for people when it looked like there wasn't enough food to go around. So the next day, everyone's on the hunt. Their bellies are rumbling. They want to find the guy who fed them. They're looking for the man who gave them the food. But look what Jesus said to them when they found him. It's up on the screen here. Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate your loaves and had your fill. Jesus says, that is not what I'm about. That is not why I've come. I've not come to fill your stomachs. I've not come simply to feed you. Jesus explains, much more importantly, he says he's been sent by God. We heard Daniel talk about it last night, didn't we? He's been sent by God in order for us to know God and in order for us to receive eternal life through believing in him. He's not come to fill your stomachs. He has come for us to know God. But look how they respond, up on the screen again. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. See, at this point, the guys listening would have been thinking about one thing and one thing only. Their minds would be going straight back to an earlier part of the Bible in the Old Testament. They would have been thinking about this time where God's people, just a, a group of people that God had set apart. And they were moving from one area and they're in hunt for a much better place. But during that massive journey, they're in a place called the wilderness. And whilst they're in that place, they're lost. They're hungry. And they're wondering what on earth is going on. And it is there that their leader, a guy called Moses, with God, provide what is called manna. Manna is simply bread. And he provides bread for them in that situation. But see, the bread, the bread wasn't just to help them there and then. Actually, the bread was a, a sign to go forward, saying that at some point, God will actually provide for their lives. So when Jesus turns around and says, hey, I've been sent by God, that's what they would have been thinking about. And that is why they then go and turn around and say, hey, Jesus, what sign then will he give us? See, instantly forgetting what Jesus had done just the day before with feeding 5,000. They turn to him and they say, hey, give us a sign. 
They were basically saying, Jesus, if you want us to believe you, if you, want you, if you want us to see and believe you, hey, show us something. Come on. Moses gave us bread for 40 years. You fed us for a day. Come on, Jesus. Give us something. They were turning around to him and saying, yeah, but so what? See, Jesus responds in two ways. Firstly, he says, hey, the bread, it wasn't Moses. It was God. It was God who provided them that man. And the second thing he says, he says, hey, the bread, the bread isn't the main point. The bread was there simply to point to a time where God is going to provide bread, not simply to satisfy the stomach, but to satisfy life. See, Jesus is saying that he is true life and that he is God's provision for life. And that is when then we get to this stage where he says, I am the bread of life. Let's look at that verse again. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What on earth is going on here then? What does Jesus mean when he says he is the bread of life? See, one church, they put outside a church building for guys to read as they drove past. It said, without the bread of life, you are toast. Put it outside their church. What on earth is Jesus on about? When he says, I am the bread of life. I guess for us here in the Western world, bread is it's not a major, major part of our lives. We do eat it, of course we do. We have it for toast, you might have it, you might get a little bit of your gravy. But for, bread isn't, it isn't the be all and end all. We have a lot of food and, and we should be very thankful for it. But I bet if we got on a plane and we flew over to Africa, it wouldn't take us long, would it, to find a little kid? just longs for a bit of bread. Just longs for a little bit of bread to get him through the day. Well, think about it a little bit closer to home. My uncle goes out every Thursday night in Cardiff into the streets to visit the homeless. And he goes out just to give them a bit of food and drink. I wonder. Imagine if we went out one night and we found a homeless person. We said, hey, mate, have this. I wonder what they'd do. Snap your hand off, wouldn't they? They'd snap your hand. Think about it just for a second in your situation. Imagine you didn't eat for two weeks. For two whole weeks, you did not have anything. You didn't have the luxury of break and breakfasts. You do not have any food for two weeks. What would you do if I offered you some of this? Jump for it, wouldn't you? You'd jump for a Sunday, Sunday to eat. Maybe not for some of us here in the Western world, bread isn't everything for us, but certainly for an African child, for a homeless person, and for those listening in, bread was an absolutely essential part of their lives. It was the essential ingredient for their lives. They ate it all the time. So what's going on here? Remember what Jesus said, I've not come to fill your stomach. I've not come to fill your stomach. I've come to something much, much more than this. So what is he on about when he says, I am the bread? See what Jesus is saying here. He is saying that he has come to fill our hearts and to give us life. When he stood there, he said, I am the bread of life. He is saying that he is the essential ingredient for life. That is what Jesus is saying when he says, he is the bread of life. See that longing? You know that longing inside each and every one of us for something more? Just for something, for a bit of fulfillment. Just for something, that longing inside of us. Jesus is saying, it's me. Now that's something to we can relate to, isn't it? That's something we can relate to. Ever had one of those times where you just long for something more? In each and every person at some point, they just long, hope, dream of something more. And they ask themselves, is this really it? Life. Is this really it? I wonder what it might look like for you. Ever felt that? Ever asked yourself that question? And I wonder, what are you trying to do to satisfy it? I wonder what you maybe put in place to make yourself feel alright. Maybe it's pursuing success. If only I achieve and I succeed, then I'll feel alright. Then I'll be okay. 
maybe for you, it's acceptance. Longing just to be accepted, then I'll feel okay. You know the feeling, yeah? Dying to make the first 15, then my mates, yeah, then my mates will accept me. Maybe it's your grades. Maybe you've had one of those moments, if, if only I get my grades. Once I've got my grades, then I'll be all right. Then I will feel okay. Maybe it's the boyfriend, the girlfriend. When I get a boyfriend, when I get my girl, yeah, then I will. Then I will feel satisfied. Well, friends, see what Jesus is saying here when he says he is the bread of life. He is saying it's not about other things. Please don't get a short-term fix to try and deal with the same situation. Jesus is saying, find it in me. Jesus is saying that he has come to give life. I am the bread of life. Believe in me. Trust in me. And you will no longer be hungry. You will no longer be thirsty. If you really want to know what life is all about, trust in him. See, Jesus is saying, to truly know life and to truly live life is to trust in him. Yes, of course, we live now. We're sitting in the room. We do. But it's merely physical. Life's full of junk, isn't it? Things that go wrong all the time. Jesus is saying, if we really want to receive life, life in all its fullness, life to the max, trust in him. Guys, if we get this, if we really get this, it transforms the way we look at Jesus, doesn't it? And ultimately, it changes your life. It changes your life. What an outrageous claim Jesus is saying. I am the bread. I have come to satisfy life forever. Well, how did they react? When Jesus said this, how did they react? Let's have a look. This is Jesus here saying, he said, But I, as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. Read it in your Bibles as we go along. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. You have seen me, and still you do not believe. Even after seeing Jesus the day before provide five food for 5,000 people, even when they found out that the bread, the manna in the desert, in the wilderness, it was from God. And even now, when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, still, they do not believe. See guys, in these verses here, we get to learn two wonderful, wonderful truths about the Christian faith. One, God is in control. God is in total control. See, God is working through Jesus to bring people back to him. God is working in us to make us realise we need Jesus. And God is working through Jesus and helping us understand that it is only in Jesus we can have life. God is in control. Maybe you sit here this evening and you go, yes, tell me more. I want to know more. That's God. That's God working in your heart, helping you understand who Jesus is. God is in total control. And what's the second thing? Well, the second thing is that if we really get this, and if we really come to know Jesus, we can receive life forever. Eternal life. Guys, get this now. When you read this, God is saying, God is saying, the God of the universe, the God who created all things, sustains all things, and is in all things, he is turning around to you and saying, if you trust in me, you will live forever. If you put your trust in Jesus, your life is secure in his hands and he will never let you go. What a thing to be told. What an amazing, amazing truth. That in Jesus, we can be totally secure and we can live forever. See what verse 40 is saying there? If we look to Jesus and believe he is true life, the saviour of souls, then we can receive eternal life. Life beyond the grave, life everlasting. 
Because see, life is short, isn't it? In, in the grand scheme of things, life is just, it's just a breath. And all of us at some stage will die. Don't know when, I, I don't know how. But understand what Jesus is saying here. If you put your trust in him, you can live forever. If you trust in Jesus, when he returns and he goes back up to heaven, we can go with him and live with him forever. What an amazing, amazing thing. What an outrageous claim Jesus is making here. Well, maybe you sit here this evening and you ask exactly the same question the guys asked when Jesus was talking about this. Take a look at this next bit. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Maybe you sit here this evening and you go, how can I taste this? How can I know? I, this, I really want to know what this is all about. How can I know total satisfaction? How can I know life forever? But look what Jesus says. Jesus answered, the work of God is this. To believe in the one he has sent. See it? God's in control. We just have to believe. I am the bread of life. In Jesus we can have total satisfaction. Ever wanted to know how to satisfy that longing inside of you? Ever wanted to experience fulfillment? But it is only in Jesus we can truly know. I am the bread of life. In him is life that lasts forever. Ever wanted to know what it looks like to live with God forever? Scared of dying? Worried about what's next? It is only in Jesus we can have life forever. Eternal life. What an outrageous claim. How can we ignore this outrageous message? Why not reflect? as the video plays for the next three seconds.